all starts with a spark. A dream. A wish. It is through your determination and resilience that your dreams, your aspirations, become a reality. Today is a celebration of this journey. The day you first discovered your passions. The instant you opened the door to your future. The challenges you overcame. The moment that you realized your hard work has gotten you here. Today, as you look around, remember a dedication to become the best version of who you were called to be. Our families, friends, and loved ones are all here to celebrate you. Your gifts, your talents, and your fullest selves. We are forever Hoyas, together as people for others. Our horizons stretch beyond DC and the hilltop, ready to make an impact on the world. Class of 2023, it is time. It is our time. Hoya Saxa.
Please be seated, everyone. Good afternoon. President DeJoya, Provost Groves, Secretary Matson, Mr. Smelyansky, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, members of the graduating class, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 commencement exercises of Georgetown University, marking the 389th year of the Jesuit presence in North America and the 479th year of service to the world. I am Paul Almeida, Dean of the McDonough School of Business. Today, we assemble to honor candidates for the degrees of Master of Business Administration, Executive Master of Admi Business Administration, Executive Masters in Leadership, yeah. Master of Arts in International Business and Policy, yeah. Master of Science in Management, yeah. Master of Science in Business Analytics, yeah. and Master of Science in Finance. You are a boisterous crowd. <laughs> Please stand for the singing of the national anthem, which will be led by the Commonwealth Brass and members of Georgetown University Concert Choir and Chamber Singers. Remain standing for the invocation delivered by Rabbi Daniel Schaefer. Friends, let us pray together. O Holy One of Blessing, how can we repay you for all that you have blessed us with? Let us raise up a cup of salvations and call out your holy name. We praise you, maker of heaven and earth, 
loving caretaker of all people. Your kindness overwhelms us and your truth is forever. You are good and your compassion knows no bounds. You have watched over our community during a difficult time in this world and fostered within us an appreciation for the sacred and the simple, learning together, eating together, celebrating together, we have been reminded of your infinite nature, that each of us is a holy and precious soul, created B'Tselem Elohim in God's image. You have made us holy to bring holiness into this world. You have guided the steps of our students on their journey to graduation, bringing them new wisdom and knowledge, connections and community, and a toolkit to transform the world. Continue to bless them with good hearts and generous souls, the ability to discern the right path and the courage to follow it. Bless their families with kindness and mercy for the endless support that they have bestowed upon these graduates. Reward them with love and gratitude and a humble pride in the accomplishments of their loved ones. Bless our staff, faculty, and administration who have made their journey possible. All who taught and guided, counseled and coordinated, bless them with your grace and kindness which endures forever. Guide all of us with your good counsel. For your namesake, be our help. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. Guard our coming and our going to life and to peace evermore and let us say, Amen. Please be seated. Our provost, Dr. Robert Groves, will deliver the official welcome. Thank you, Dean Almeida. It is my deep pleasure to see all of you in front of us, our graduates and guests, at this commencement ceremony for the McDonough School of Business. I especially welcome those who've come from far away, in particular those for whom this is the first time on this hilltop campus, which for over 230 years has educated its students to become leaders in service to the nation and to the world. Why, you might wonder, do we call graduation commencement? This is an ending, not a beginning. You are about to leave. You have not just arrived, as several years of tuition payments make clear to you. <laughs> Naming this event commencement is rooted in the very beginning of these ceremonies in the Europe of the 12th century when what we understand as universities first evolved. The gowns you now wear and the somewhat heavier gowns up here that we wear, the hoods on your arms were clothing stipulated for scholars. They were warm hoods and gowns for then unheated buildings. They weren't very well designed for summers in Washington, D.C. in May, although this is a good day for weather. And the ceremonies were called commencement because they, marched, they marked beginnings, just as this ceremony does today. The beginning of your lives in the world. And we trust the beginning of your lives for the world as people for others. I must tell you, the world needs you badly, more than ever before. It needs your knowledge, it needs your skills, your idealism, your compassion, and above all, your energy. And so, you commence. The world is all before you now. We on the stage can't wait to witness the accomplishments in your future. You should know we are very, very proud of you and your achievements that bring us to this day. Congratulations for all. Thank you for coming. Uh, 
Thank you, Dr. Groves. Our founder, Most Reverend John Carroll, first Archbishop of Baltimore and first Catholic Bishop in the United States, took legal possession of land on our hilltop in 1789, and we mark that as our founding date. Our first student, the future North Carolina Congressman, William Gaston, arrived in 1791, though our first bachelor's degrees were not awarded until 1817. It was in 1815 that with enrollments passing the 100 mark, the college's president, Father John Grassi, of the Society of Jesus, asked then Congressman Gaston to present a petition for a federal charter, a document that still today sanctions the academic business that we do. Georgetown's charter, the first federal charter in the history of the Republic, has the additional distinction of having been signed by President James Madison, the father of the United States Constitution. It is our custom to initiate academic ceremonies with a reading of that charter. To discharge that office, I'm pleased to introduce Ms. Marie Matson, Secretary of the University. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are, or from time to time may be, the president and directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia, to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges and universities of the United States, and to issue in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission of such degree. Signed, Langdon Chivas, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Gaillard, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison, President of the United States. It is now my honor to introduce Vice Dean for Faculty, Rebecca Hamilton, the Michael and Robin Poseros Chair and Professor of Marketing at the McDonough School of, of Business, who will read the honorary degree citation. Today, Georgetown University recognizes an alumnus who with a long distinguished career in public service is now transforming the lives of millions in his home country of Ukraine. As the Chief Executive Officer and Director General of the Ukrainian National Post, Igor Smolyansky has faced and continues to face extraordinary challenges. Since assuming office in 2016, he has been tasked with rooting out corruption, modernizing the postal system, and raising both the level of dependability and the quality of service for all Ukraine. After a simultaneous pursuit of a business degree at Georgetown and a law degree at George Washington University, he pursued a significant career with both Boston Consulting Group and KPMG in New York, in charge of mergers and acquisitions and in the banking sector, responsible for transactions of up to $60 billion. He enjoyed this work, but he was also eager to find a way to make a visible impact on everyday people. When the opportunity arose to return home to lead Ukraine's Postal Service, he felt called to make his mark on a public organization with a poor reputation. When he started, only 20% of the more than 10,000 branches had a computer. The average age of the trucks was 17 years. And corruption was rampant, from the mail carriers to top management. By 2022, the Ukrainian National Post was a very different organization. 
With more than 50,000 employees and 10,000 branches across Ukraine, it had modernized its operations, doubled its revenue, and received the Best Postal Service Award from World & Parcel in the corporate governance and e-commerce categories. Since the start of the war with Russia on February 24th, 2022, his day-to-day -day focus has changed dramatically. The Ukrainian Post has become a lifeline to many Ukrainians, delivering financial assistance and humanitarian aid to people across the entire nation, evacuating businesses and people, as well as continuing to deliver parcels and mail. Within the first two weeks of the war, the Ukrainian Post had launched an air bridge to the United States to keep Ukrainian businesses selling on eBay and Amazon while bringing back humanitarian and medical supplies. More than three million people monthly depend on pension and financial assistance distributed by the Ukrainian Post. While he was personally delivering packages amid the rubble from villages and shellings, a woman told him the pension he delivered would now allow her to buy the first meal in days. Others asked him to reach out to family to let them know they're still alive. The impact he and his team continue to make in the country is incalculable and essential. The challenges of war have required him and the postal system he heads to be innovative and nimble. The world in which they operate changes almost daily. To uphold their promise of timely deliveries, they've opened new physical and mobile branches, switched from trucks to railroad deliveries to avoid nighttime curfews, hid operations in old garages to avoid targeting from Russian rockets. In his words, their mantra was, we have to do it. Let's find a way to do it. In recognition of how he's put into practice the idea of business as a force for good in the world, for his dedication to humanitarian efforts, for the people of Ukraine, and for his extraordinary example of becoming, in our Jesuit tuition, a man for others, Georgetown University is pleased to bestow upon Igor Smelyansky the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon Igor Smelyansky the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. It's now my pleasure to present to you Georgetown's newest double Hoya, Igor Smelyansky, who will deliver the commencement address. Thank you, President DeJoya. Thank you, President Hamilton, for such a stellar introduction. Uh, imagine getting an honorary Georgetown doctorate for being a mailman. <laughs> Though I must say, in this city, you knew a few famous mailmen postmaster general before me. Those who did not that bad in their careers. Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Franklin, Harry Truman, to name a few. So if you're still thinking about career, think about the mail. <laughs> President DeJoy, Provost Groves, Dean Almeida, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, my favorite professors. You see, I'm not that old yet. They're still on stage. And all those who love one of these graduates, I'm humbled to be here today with you. But today is not my day, well, a little. Today is your day, so let's give a round of applause to Hoya MSB class of 2023. Congratulations. <laughs> en enjoy it. It may be some time before you get that reception at work, so enjoy it for a few more days. Before we start, I want to recognize that I would not be here today if it were not for bravery and sacrifices of our great armed forces, volunteers, people around the globe, some politicians for a change, and uh, some of you. So to helping Ukraine to survive 
and win this war for freedom and basic human rights. So thank you for your support. Now, I obviously could not wear it at work, uh, but I did not escape the wartime apparatus to come here and deliver boring, feel-good commencement address. My friends in Ukraine and my classmates from MSB 2005 would make fun of me for the rest of my life if I did that, and I know they're watching. So I also hope that no one in this hall ever will ever need any guidance on how you manage a company during the war. But I do have stories to share from these trying times that helped me to grow in courage vision, impact, and heart. These stories cannot and should not live only within the memories of Ukraine. The lessons from these stories have been hard won, and they belong with every person who wants to leave a mark on this world. At a place like Georgetown, I can be sure it includes all of you, as graduates from over 60 countries are represented here today. So first, let's talk about risk-taking. In late February 2022, Moscow, the name of Russia's most powerful warship in the Black Sea, was heard broadcasting this message to Ukrainian defenders on, on Snake Island. I, Russian warship, repeat the offer. Put down your arms and surrender, or you will be killed. To which our soldiers reply, and this is the exact quote, I promise to be gentle, Russian warship, go <coughs> yourself. This retort from our capsule soldiers became a rallying cry for our war effort, bolstering the confidence of millions of Ukrainians. Our military resources were outmatched in number, they still do, but I know that spirit is a renewable and abundant resource. I wanted to commemorate the exchange with the postage stamp, to literally stamp this fearless moment into our national identity and history books. But as you may have heard, um, the government services should not use foul language most of the time. And our team was concerned that, looking, that we would be looking immature on the world stage. This was our first months into the war and all eyes were on Ukraine. Would the world send weapons to aid the government or a country without the sense of propriety? But as far as I knew, in that moment, our foul mouth and unwavering guts were all we had for certain. Military citizens will come later. But back then, we needed all we could to sustain this morale boost. So I was just not happy with the exchange. I decided to launch a national competition to depict the stamp. You can imagine what competition that was. So on April 12, 2022, we launched a stamp with the silhouette of Ukrainian soldier giving the middle finger to Moscow, the warship. Ukraine rejoiced. Two days later, on April 14th, our Navy sent Moscow, for now just the warship, to the bottom of the Black Sea. So the message on that stamp got through. We are the post, after all, we deliver. Demand for that stamp was viral and global. We became the first postal service to open stores on Amazon and eBay, later raising millions of dollars for our military, schools, and animal shelters. The Postal Service was such a hot topic that Russia began to suspect we were a part of the special ops team plotting to sink Moscow. So they attacked our postal infrastructure. Risk-taking is often a careful calculation, as I learned in Professor Pinkovitz's class, on calculating alpha and beta. <laughs> but there are also moments where guts can accomplish something as impossible as making the Postal Service seem cool and capable of sinking enemy ships. Choosing what you'll dedicate your gifts and energy to is one of the most sacred and personal journeys you will go on this life. Unfortunately, in my case, aggression made my what and why very obvious. But once you know what you're fighting for, and if you know to be right and true and aligned with your values, then comes the fun part. How? So let's talk about persistence. In the first six months of the war, we had to learn how to work on the constant shelling, bombing, and attacks. We got around night curfews by using tra trains to move parcels. When airports shut down, you see this one works, uh, we used neighboring countries to keep mail moving globally. But in the winter, Russia started to bomb power and mobile stations. We lost electricity, phone connections, internet, water and heat for days at a time. No one would have blamed us for stopping deliveries, opposing pension payments in such circumstances. 
But the easiest choice is not always the right choice. Remember the Jesuit phrase inscribed in Georgetown core values, cura personalis, care of the person. With human life, it's much easier to keep the heart and body running than to resuscitate it when it stops. And in Ukraine today, the postal service is a human lifeline for providing critical access to money, food, medicine. We needed to keep the postal service running for there might be no one left to resuscitate it if we fail. Postal services have run for ages, slightly older than Georgetown, without electricity, so some trigger-happy Russians weren't going to change it. We muscled through, old style, running operations with pens and papers, candles and flashlights, while we procured many generators and starlings as we could find. And then we, we did not miss a single day of service. One day, I was visiting a branch in one of the hardest hit areas. Five minutes after air raid sirens went off, a young girl walks into the branch with a parcel box. She recognized me, it's cool to be famous, and asked for a joint selfie for her Instagram. I asked her what was she sending. She told me that she sells glassware for weddings on Etsy and Amazon, and because Ukar Poshta is still operating, her business has been able to support five families throughout this war. We've heard hundreds, thousands of the stories like this, of our persistent fight to maintain the baseline of normalcy, of a functioning postal service that fundamentally help Ukrainians weather this disaster. Persistence will help you through buggy code, bad experiments, and stalled dreams. Persistence will help you sell and deliver wares for the happiest days of people's lives during some of the worst days of your own. Persistence is also why Ukrainians are winning this war against the larger, more powerful enemies. Ukarposhta is entrusted with millions of parcel boxes each day, so you can guess I've seen my share of boxes. As you carry these graduate degrees into the next phase of your career, you will often feel pressure to take conventional paths, to put yourself in the box. Boxes are incredible places to grow and train, and even I am not immune to appeal of a safe box. For all we know, that fitting into boxes can actually get you decently far in business and life. But such boxes are prepackaged with standardized formulas, benchmarks, and results. And they often do not contain the tools one needs to rise for unprecedented challenges. If you don't have a game plan yet to eventually break yourself out of the box, don't worry. Artificial intelligence will forcibly kick you out of it <laughs> because predictable boxes are the easiest targets for takeover by computerized logic. But before AI comes to take your box, life will offer you, as they did to me, numerous box cutters. It's then up to you to accept the terror and thrill of emerging into undefined space in which you will discover your full potential as a leader. If you work hard and be the best at what you do, you can think in a non-standard ways. You will never be replaced or boxed in. Actually, when you're the best, then the rules stretch, and you are writing those rules. Here is an example of what happened when I picked up the boss cutter, and I hope that you will be able to draw from it when it's time to take deep breath and pick up your own. The story is about showing up. The hardest part of my job is to make a decision every day whether 50,000 employees should or should not go to work. This keeps me up at night because to go on and deliver in war zone or during air attacks is to risk your life. We have already lost over 10 postal workers, and I carry each loss with me every day. But Ukrainian Postal Service is often the only company operating in the occupied areas, near front lines, and lives of millions of people depend on ours showing up. The decisions I make must balance care for our employees with care for the people they serve. I knew the only way I could make such hard decisions was to be on the ground with my workers. Often we need to decide where to deliver critical supplies to cities and villages that can only be reached by a single road, a road subject to constant enemy shelling. And most of the time, we do make decision to go, not because it's safe, but because it's the right thing to do. Because when you show up, you're not just bringing food and services. You're bringing hope and assurance that your country did not give up on its people. I remember bringing pension and medicine into the city that without, was without the power, mobile connection, and gas for over a month. Most humanitarian convoys, unfortunately, did not make it that week, but we did. And as we were finishing our work and preparing to leave, People in their gratitude brought us freshly baked bread that they were somehow, I don't know how, been able to bake without energy source or steady supply of food. In moments like this, you and your team realize that whatever the risks we took was all worth it. 
After we bear witness on the strips, I do not have to convince anyone to keep working in those dangerous circumstances, myself included. Moreover, sometimes I actually have to hold off my employees from going back into danger zones because they feel personal attachment, personal pride and responsibility for those that are waiting for them. Having broken out of my technocratic box, I found the truest reminder of why I do what I do. When we show up and pay attention, we begin to act from an urgent sense of purpose and calling. And the last thing we need to talk is about ambition. Success is not the right horse for long, leisurely rides. You must constantly work to stay on top of it. If at the beginning of the war, people appreciate we just work, then soon they want us to restore one or two days maximum delivery. And without difficulties and mistakes, we managed to do it, winning awards from such companies like eBay for maintaining global delivery standards despite not having a single airport working in the country. But our work has only just begun. Raising the bar isn't just about revenue growth or improving your company reputation, though it's cool. People are morally and physically exhausted after over a year of war. Raising the bar is our response to fatigue. We've launched thousands of movable offices that can reach any city or village via any type of terrain. And now we've set an ambitious goal of 100% digital Ukraine within the next six months, dodging missiles to build it so that anyone anywhere can receive digital services throughout sustainable infrastructure independent of power grids or cell phone towers. So why is this postal service now need to maintain Ukraine's internet? Sure, being able to watch Netflix while waiting, uh, waiting out long air attacks in the bunker is nice, and a lot of people do that. But that's not why we do it. We do it because in the war, the entire infrastructure is destroyed. It destroys stores, pharmacies, banks and ATMs don't work without power of internet. Our mail carriers already reach everyone, so equipping them with connectivity device will enable unprecedented access to services that will remain operational even when pharmacy stores and offices are flattened by an enemy. Small things matter. When a grandma can order her favorite teacup, tablecloths, or chocolate to cope with stress, it brings some normalcy. It feels like hope. Then grandma can even open her first saving account and save for the new dress that she will wear to our victory celebration. This, when your team resonates with a big dream, tiredness takes a back seat. These shared dreams of resilience and connectedness get us out of the bed, hoping and fighting each and every day. Now, I've shared these stories not because I believe you should go into your first job with a middle finger in the air, running toward danger, informing your boss that their vision isn't grand enough, sinking the metaphorical ships of your good sense and relationships. Please don't do it. I share this experience to fill your imagination with reminders of the power of knowing when and how to step out of those boxes. In 1946, Winston Churchill offered this in his commencement speech. Success is not final, failure is not fatal, it's the courage to continue that counts. You all came to Georgetown looking for something. The textbooks, case studies, technical know-how, coveted jobs, and enduring friendship you found here are part of the answer. But seeking will be a lifelong endeavor. And the universe will, time and time again, call on you to trust yourself to carve out unique path meant for you and your community. That path will be littered with boxes that you have broken out from, and that path will deliver you rain, shine, or bumps to your destiny. Hoya Saksa, best of luck to you and your families, and Slava Ukraini. Thank you, Igor. Before we begin the presentation of the candidates for degree, I would like to recognize the contributions made by the faculty and staff who are my diligent partners here at the McDonough School of Business. As students, each one of you has studied with, been challenged by, and sought counsel from many of our faculty and members of the staff. I therefore ask you, as graduates, to join me in expressing appreciation to your teachers and administration. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to introduce my distinguished colleagues, the faculty and staff 
of the McDonough School of Business. They're very modest, they didn't want to stand up. <laughs> we will now proceed to the presentation of candidates for the degree. The graduates will come forward to receive their diploma. Please hold your applause until all graduates have received their diplomas. Are you going to listen to me? <laughs> the top 20% of students in our graduate programs have been inducted into Beta Gamma Sigma the National Scholastic Honor Society for Business Degree Programs. The top 10% of our graduate students who maintained high GPAs during the tenure of their programs will graduate as McDonough Scholars. Dean Das Mohapatra, please come forward to announce the full-time and flex MBA program graduates. Dean O'Leary, please come forward to announce the executive MBA Executive Masters in Leadership, Master of Arts in International Business and Policy, Master of Science in Management, and Master of Science in Business Analytics programs. Dean Eberhardt, please come forward to announce the Master of Science in Finance program graduates. Will Professors Malavia, Kamrad, Williams, Kurster, Pinkowitz, Seifer, and Angel come forward to hood the graduates. Hello, C congratulations to the graduates. As Senior Associate Dean of the MBA programs, I'm proud to call for the following full-time MBA graduates. Gregoire Marville, valedictorian of the full-time MBA class and McDonough Scholar. <laughs> El Yazid Araski, salutatorian of the full-time MBA class and McDonough Scholar. Zoe Alba, McDonough Scholar. <laughs> Douglas Craig Adams, Esther Aduser, Ayush Agarwal, Stephen Chihun On, Omar Ghassan Alkoja, Roger Edward Alcroft, Maria Gracia Amado, Gaurav Amin, Nikki Amzadi, McDonough Scholar, <laughs> Sumit Anand, Ni Adama Arnan, Aditi Simha, Jeffrey John Asunshan, William Edwards, Athi Lloyd, Amy Anjali Oral, James Gabriel Azar, Daniel Xavier Zerate Bandong, Julian Barqui Montaner, Ronald Bass, McDonough Scholar, Martin Belmont, Raphael Beltran, Jacob Burns, McDonough Scholar, Avantika Bhardwaj, Munira Bin Kasim, Lee Blumenberg, William Wassel, Andres Bravo, McDonough Scholar, Elizabeth Fallon Bridgeland. Derek Peter Brown. Khadija Rosemary Brightson Van.
Aija Riaz Bakari. Jack Burns. Philip Busick. Aaron Troy Boothman. Laura Caicedo. Jeffrey Schwa. William Burns Carlson. Tate Carter Graham. Nicola Julian Chapel. Shreya Chaube. Benjamin Allen Cherian. Anubhav Chabra, Kevin Chu McDonough Scholar, Matthew Chung, Alexander Woodson Clements McDonough Scholar, RJ Gode, Alexis Michelle Cohen, Katie Dara Kolaruli, Jesse Da Silva Sims, Ross Andrew Dakery, Omkar Dar, Zoe Arden Davis, Francisco D. Mendiola, Tion Du Nason. Kendall Lillian Deegan, Ameya Deshmukh, Thomas Patrick Devlin, Ravina Damija, Andrew Dixon. Vaisha Dillard, yeah. Nina Ding, Zach Dunmez, Brian Duffy, Nadia Durani, Kristen Richard Tabor Edge. Nicholas England, Genevieve Inam Bitang, Sarah Wynn Fairbrook McDonough Scholar, Mohammed Adil Faruqi, Caroline Fernandez. Alexander Benjamin Fine, Sean Michael Fisher, Teresa Clotilde Ford McDonough Scholar, Christopher Forst, 
Peter Frolic, Caitlin Franz, Samuel William Fujinoka, McDonough Scholar, Margaret Gabriel, Rajiv Ranjan Ganguly, Alexander Jacob Ganik, Sajal Garg, Brendan David Garnes, Abhijit Gopala Golanapalli, Joao Felipe Gomez de Almeida, Joey M. Gonzalez Ball, go in the box underneath. Alfonso J. Gonzalez, Brandon Franchosi Goolsby, Jacob Gottlieb, Christopher Fanis Grievous, Victor Hugo Sequira Guamerez, Guillermo Gutierrez, Sri Harsha Sai Chaudhary Gutta, Juan Pablo Hernandez, Arturo Arrera Trevino, Grace Rollins Hodge, McDonough Scholar, Henry Hoglin, Brooke Louise Holsinger, Brendan Kennedy Hurley, Ariel Katrina Hines, McDonough Scholar, Zainab Imam, Ankita Jan, Ra Jaying, Vanessa Jarns, McDonough Scholar, Kevin Jennings, Kendall Nicole Johnson, Laura Johnson, Warren Daniel Jubal, Ajay Prasad Kadaba, Ashwarya Kaniganti, Mayank Karna, Paul Kassar, Colin Key, Ozan Kendi Gallion, Timothy Dominic Kennelly III, Sheila Kewal Ramani, Rimjim Khandalwal, Caroline Alice King, Pratik Kithania, Justin Daniel Ko, Bruno Kubata Jr., Ethan Levine, Austin Ang Lee, Jun Sok Lee, Christopher Lent, Kelly Lewis, Alejandro Lefkowitz, 
Xiao Chu Nina Lin, Maggie Lin, Emmy Lu, Lao Zhu, Zen Singh Lohit, Douglas Edward Lyons, Alessandro Magliani, Harshiv Mahajan, Adi Kiran Mahajani, Aditya Maheshwari, Martin Luigi Marcelino, McDonough Scholar, Andre Marcek, McDonough Scholar, Jose Maria Xavier Mayorga, Audrey McLean, Luke McGinty, McDonough Scholar, Jessica McLemore, Dylan McManus, Gina Marie McSorley, Danya Merzi, Rafat Mia, Cheryl Shanda Mike, Eric Andrew Miller, Mitravanu Mishra, Brendan Michael Muha, Ravi Suresh Kumar Mistri, Hari Krishna Mohan, His order has changed. Michael Mazikato, Sudhir Nikalapudi, McDonough Scholar, Philip Nelson, Arpit Nima. Sulab Nevatia, McDonough Scholar. Brendan Michael Muha. Ravish Madan. Daniel Nicolosi. Matthew O'Brien. Julian Alexander Okando, Tomoki Otani, Chen Leipan, McDonough Scholar, Shu Pan, J. Panandekar, McDonough Scholar. Ashwar Pandey, Vineet Pundharpurkar, Vishal Panjwani, Vandana Pawar, Priya Jitesh Parikh, McDonough Scholar, 
Sophia Parini Easterman. Alekia Muthiam Parki. Advitya Patro. Edson Perez. Matthew Pollen, Vikram Ramesh Purohit, Carolina Quigo, Paul Nicholas Quiljais, McDonough Scholar, Sean Quinn. Lipika Ragunathan, Michael Taroton Reli, Rishu Raj Singh, Ranjani Rajendran, Chaitanya Rajkumar, Andres Ignacio Ramos, Shivani Rana, Udebhan Singh Rana, Adam Michael Reinstein, Bryce Logan Relaford. Carlos Rivas Sepulvera, Lauren Robinson, Susanna Lee Ross, Felipe Alberto Rubio, Kanishka Russell, KK Saha. Spriha Sakshi, Kofi Sachi Jr., Eric Saldana, McDonough Scholar, Melvin Gustavo Salinas, Dale Salton. Nicholas Sandstrom, Carlo Caesar Quinones Sangalang, Kavya Swathi Sankavaram, Connor Sokis, Dipanshu Saxena. Michael Wayne Scanlon the second Kevin Shook Avi Sain Majumdar Tanvi Sate Narek Sevacharyan Kush Sanjay Shah, Tatiana Shanjina, Ashman Kapil Sharma, Gautam Sharma, Elizabeth Shaya. Vivian Shian, Nana Simizu, Mary Elizabeth Shatley, Jack Singh, 
Shorya Singh, Sukhdeep Singh, Ian Michael Smith, Rachel Marie Salomon, Alex Spire, Aditya Srivastava, Sean Patrick Stanton, Jesse Brian Stupler, Nicholas Sa, Sachin Sunny Jacob, Anuja Ravindra Talathi, Munib Tariq McDonough Scholar, Lucas Chayan, Rohan Sunil Thomas, Swastik Todi, Kevin Michael Tolan, McDonough Scholar, Milos Tomovich, Dong Yu Wen, Tyler Sebastian Valenti, Flora Van Vredenberg, Samuel Warney, Kendall M. Visa, Sophia Vegara, Natalia Beatriz Velasquez, VM Aditya, Campbell Eddington Wallace II, TJ Waltz, Dazelle Deshaun Washington, Natalie Weeks, McDonough Scholar. <laughs> Julia Weiss. <laughs> Wu Cheng Wen. <laughs> Lauren Mary Whelan. <laughs> Evan Walladis. Nanan Wu, Trevor John Wyand, Cedar Shi, Shelchian Shing, Louis Yanis. Edward Michael Yap, Michelle La Yo Yap, Teresa Ye, Michael Yoon, Catherine Misung Yu, Michelle Zayed Atala. These are the Master of Business Administration Flex MBA students. He's Jonathan Cooper Shembor, valedictorian of the Flex MBA class and McDonough Scholar. Emma Elizabeth Wenzinger, salutatorian of the Flex MBA class and McDonough Scholar. Christopher Ahn. 
Sabir Icy. Noderbeck Atabekovic Akhmedov. Andrea Alvarez. Brian James Anderson. Sarah Quigley Andrews McDonough Scholar. Brandon Karosh Arvon. Ola Kitan Babalola. Marley Catherine Balcom. Drew Paul Bosher McDonough Scholar. Loy Buoya. Juliana Biondo. Jason Gregory Blanco. Andres Felipe Bol. Camille Bulos. Andrew Burnett. Lauren Ebkar Kuhelin, McDonough Scholar. Alia Kureshi Camacho. Christopher Bradley Carey. Annabelle Chang. Alexa Charlip. Casey Chow. Brenna Corrigan. Lauren Opal DeFranco. Audrey Michelle Denis, McDonough Scholar. Emily Dixon. Hilary Rose Dolinsky. Sydney Aaron Eckhart. Carolina Epperlane Ponzento, McDonough Scholar. Joshua Frankie Ewig. Sheen Yu Fan. Josie Feltes. Catherine Ryan Fitzgerald. Kenneth Gable. Yasmin Gobriel. Hannah Rose Gross. Andrea Guerrero Jamie. Oshima Gupta. Daniel Haig. John Paul Hines. Nathaniel Donald Hoffman. Kristen Hook. Ashley Corin Hudderson. Nathan Joseph Hughes. McDonough Scholar. Alex Jaffe. Kaylin Nicole Jurger. Josiah Kielsen. Jake Artemis Karnak. David Angru Long. Nathan Joseph Larson. Audrey Lee. Olivia Lewis Leonard. Sierra L. Lilac. Christine Lynn. 
Natasha Loda, Richard Lee Luo, Michael Christopher Malanga, Benjamin Gomer Martin, Jaime Martinez, Daniel Shan May, Ryan Nicholas Melcher, Gordon James, James Miller, Michael Anthony Michia II, Ryan Philip Arthur Mouton, Leah Nicole Musti, Venkat Nopada, Leon Chike Wankawa, Tyler, Tyler Ross Oberlander, Samuel Wilson Oldhauser, Ren Mitchell Osborne, Joshua Otto, Corey Palmer, Jeffin Vincent Pananchari, Shruti Pandey, Matthew Gregory Peel, Samantha Holbrook Poremba, Jim Purcell, Kevin Wan, Anthony Barrett Pusartiri. Ananya Reddy, Samad Reed, Andrew Zercher Reichardt, Emily Marie Reynolds, Margaret Elizabeth Roulette. Matt Russell McDonough Scholar, Yuval Shaw, Kaylee Alice Shepagrill, Amanda Jacqueline Schkaltzi, Corey Schwab. Rebecca Lauren Shafron, McDonough Scholar. John Cochran Schluder. Kellen Michael Salit. Joshua Thomas Shantag. Kelly Stack. Catherine Jennings Tirabini, Shimang Tong McDonough Scholar, Joseph Ming Sung, Freddie Vance, Jose Miguel Villascusa Cerezo. Amel Bureau, Johanna R. Walsh, Richard Ziad Ward, Paige Wise, Amanda Woodworth, 
Amy Ann Wright, Benjamin Scott Robel, Teresa Yarim Yan, Michael Jalasni, Katie Zalkal. Hannah Chan Zo, McDonough Scholar. Madeline Claire Zick. Congratulations to all of the students from the Master of Business Administration and the class of 2023, their families and friends. Thank you very much. As Senior Associate Dean for Graduate and Executive Degree Programs, I'm proud to call forth the following Executive MBA graduates. Sindhu Venkata Adini. Tolu Adu. Abena Akufu Akoto. Jennifer Austin. Blake Daniel Barfield. Sander Beck, McDonough Scholar. Brian Leonardo Benavides. James Michael Bodie Sr. Jonathan L. Branch. Preston Wade Capers. Johnny Ceballos. Naja Change. Carrie Allison Clark. Nakai Valentina Duro. Kelly Evans Wigan, McDonough Scholar. Kyle S. George. Jennifer Thomas Goodwin. Sinead Patrice Guerin. Adam Hahn. Stephen Grant Hallmark. Zachary Scott Hayden. Robert Quinton Holly. Mo Isaac. Teen Jack Rich. Kamal Khan. Adam Ross Lair. Jean Service Dacoud. Ryan Anthony Lundrigan. Joyce Yamat Meyer. Roger Miranda. Caroline Noai. Jasmine Ohi. Jennifer Orbs, McDonough Scholar. Michelle Quilio. Jacob Nathaniel Walker Rands. Julia Caitlin Roberts. Jonathan Lewis Sargent. Eddie Silva. Tanya Alicia Joanne Stevens. 
Daniel Sullivan. Karen Sanga. Tiffany Lynn Tuttle. Ian Uhar, McDonough Scholar. Sarojini Sushma Devi Vedi. Pamela Patricia Wilson. James Yim. Daniel Zeidelman. I am proud to now call forth the following Executive Masters in Leadership graduates. Kayvon Akhtar. Matthew Michael Joseph Barr. Mark Barbieri. Pablo Jaime Blanc, McDonough Scholar. Brian Chong. Joshua Falk. Rashid Gargash. Lionel Joseph Goday. Wanda Nicole Jackson. Ronald Castle. Paul Kishnik. Gaborla Lawal. Larry Wong. Tessa Lynn Martin. Renee Lutterell Munasafi. Dan Siegel. Aaron Dubinsky. George Thomas Turner, Jr. Anthony Darren Wise. I am proud to now call forth the following Master of Arts in International Business and Policy graduates. Abdullah M. Al Atiya, Nasser Al Atiya, Carolina Arias Parada, Christopher Arsenault, Abdul Rahman Talal Bakir, Jeffrey Randolph Berg, McDonough Scholar. Akobi Shane Damali Burton. Alejandra D'Alessia Castro. Pratima Gangopadier. Anita Garay Smith. Edward Hobson Jr. Tara Julia Jakubic. Yan Jin. Christelle Shiala Kazadi. Drilon Loja. Zachary Duncan Mays. Anne Elizabeth Paisley, McDonough Scholar. Stephen Barrett Salfidi. Carolina M. Vieira. Bruce Leon Villasenor. I am now proud to call forth the following Master of Science in Management graduates. Hadi Maurice Abbas. Dina Abadrabo. Aman Agarwal. Zubair Ahmed. 
Jara bin Saleh Alela. Sri Lakshmi Anand. Andrew Babiak. Veronica Bindra. Arsh Blana. Carolina Colobon Briones. Elizabeth Anna Brown. Kate Bushell. Paula Carpio Martinez. <laughs> Ashe Chowdhury. <laughs> Esther Chung. <laughs> Andrea Marie Clausen, McDonough Scholar. <laughs> Mafalda de Macedo Chavez Lopez Guimares. Damien Emmanuel DeLong. And Camille Devlin. Garvida Duda. Christina Elisa Ernest Eid. Lauren L. Coley. Lily Virginia Elder. Emily Bray Engebretson. Jennifer Ava. Kelly Marie Fisher. Andrew London Frinks. Fotini Theodora Gali. Grace Emma Gilio Salvador. Kanun Giri. <laughs> Ernest Henry Grappi IV. Yosef E. Hajir. Michelle Hayat. Henri Corniati Herman. Malcolm Baldridge Hollensteiner Jr. Young Si Hong. Alfredo Jose Izurieta. Yan Jiang. Vasileos Kafkas. Orvika Kapoor. Saipriya Carve. Ross Michael Kudich. Jotsu Lai. Chase Javen Lambert Burton. Rebecca Jem Leathers. Sihan Liu. Ahmad Lozi. Isabella Catalina Masia. Vanessa Castro. Swetha Manivanan. Bia Mansoor. Hannah Caroline Machino. Mackenzie Glynn Meadows. Edward Hubert Millay, McDonough Scholar. Rachel Mills. Zianda Siabule Mtronchi. Mackenzie Mully. Alexander Christopher Murphy. Antonio Manuel Santos Cardoza de Napolis. 
Lakshay Narang, McDonough Scholar. Sandeya Sri Narasimharaj. Alberto Navarro Alaez, McDonough Scholar. Siddharth Parashar. Mahek Paresh Parekh. Mini Patel. Brooke Plunka. Anna Pushkas. Florencia Ramella Tedamonti. Andrew Hunter Rare, McDonough Scholar. Michael Safa Rifka, McDonough Scholar. Theodore Rinaldi, McDonough Scholar. Fernando Riveros. Olivia Hope Rubin. Anna Rubino. Jaime Ruiz de Arcaute. Adonis Sabah. Ryan Robert Silva, McDonough Scholar. Udit Singhal. Christopher Ty Sumners. Vivian Marie Sweha. Shivani Raju Chokachilu. Arjun Sai Vale. Sabari Ganesh Viswanathan, McDonough Scholar. Nishitha Vivek, McDonough Scholar. Eleanor Bonsal Winans. Nicole Zidan. Bao Yi Zhao. Yuran Zhu. I am proud to now call forth the following Master of Science in Business Analytics graduates. Andrea Aleman. Daniel R. Behrens. James Thomas DePaul. Wen Wei Fong, McDonough Scholar. Mariam Fazel. Siwei Fong. Zhu Tracy Fong. Juan Carlos Rodrigo Figueroa Quintana. Amber Germain Lucy Fording. Alexander Gerstenfield. Ying Yi Wang. He up when Connor Newman Powell, Peter Rudolph Vale, McDonough Scholar, Angela Zhang, sure, sure, sounds good. Wait until everybody's done, I guess. Come on, everyone. As Senior Associate Dean for the Master of Science and Finance program, I'm proud to call forth the following graduates. Yonel W. Admasu, McDonough Scholar. Nabia Afsal. Raul Alfaro. Eric Robert Allman, Jr. Luz Abreu Armienta. Chris Aaron Arroyo. 
Mohit Asani. Julian David Atide. Abraham Asnorian. Joseph Charles Barbera. Leslie Barton Lewis. Muzamil Bashir. Eve Bungu. Carter Bedford Brown. Shane Saeed Brunel. Emmanuel Alan Bruno. Nicholas Anthony Canella. Eugene Stefan Carouse. Michael Thomas Carolyn. Brent Vincent Carey. Patrick T. Celsus. Joseph Sarasano. Benjamin Perry Chase. Jayan Chen. Christopher Edward Chipman. Enoch Peter Cho, McDonough Scholar. Shailen Clay. Daniel Cameron Cochran. Ashlyn Michaela Coleman. Noel Connolly. James Arthur Damask. Olawalashola Davidson. Nadine Elizabeth Del Carmen. Kumba Cassandre Dem. Charles Devere. Pradeep Damavarapu. Christian Diaz de Valdivielzo. Bryn Doherty. Jazzy Patricia Dunk III, McDonough Scholar. Santiago Duque. Trevor Joseph Ferrara. Brett Alexander Foreman. Alexander Worthington Freeman. Jessica Isela Fuentes Diaz. Erpit Gerg. Riley Dwayne Garland. Angelina Gosnell. Micah Gertzog. Richard Harrison Goldstein. Nicholas Gorski. Gabriel Gazdira. Henry Edgar Grant. Andrew Joseph Graziano. Alexa Geyer. Drew Bailey Hadlock. Alexander Blaine Hall. Jonathan James Heath. 
Joshua Baker High School. James Henley. Katie Hessian. Ramon Jamar Shepard Hines. Joshua Matthew Hurt. Scott Laverne Howe. Jinu Huang. Kara Elizabeth Jerizov. There. Okay, you get to graduate. <laughs> Charles Sidney Jones III. Kavita Kakar. Don't, don't let me look at these people. <laughs> Vignesh Koss, McDonough Scholar. Kevin Byers Kafalis. Andre Coben. Kevin Andrew Concilia, McDonough Scholar. Christian Lee. Heather Martin Lejeune. Christopher Roman Yabrez. Joseph R. Loftus. Brendan James Lyons. Ahmed Malik. Maz Malik, McDonough Scholar. Derek Benjamin Margiota. Spencer David Maslin. Thomas McBreerty, McDonough Scholar. Matthew Thomas Owen McCall. Michael McCann, McDonough Scholar. Brianna Kitchell McCoy. Connor Ben Hockamu. Brendan McGlynn, McDonough Scholar. Josue Mesa. Anthony Milanese. Michael Moisev. Shonalika Mandal. Justin Daniel Moon. Daniel Charles Moore. Daniel Morgan. Federico Andres Nanini. Sham Kashav Narasimharaj. Ahmed Nabil Nasri. Luz Maria Negrete. Dr. Joshua Elliott Novi, McDonough Scholar. Joshua Ocaro. Nolan Patrick Padeen. Brian Pierce. Nicholas Wilder Pernis. Stefano Peroni, McDonough Scholar. Emil Christopher Pizzullo. Jacob Anthony Polisino. Aaron Wesley Potts. Brendan Michael Reditovich. Nayanthara Ramachandran. 
Randall Ramratton. James Arthur Rhodes III. John Henry Roby. Sarah Elisa Runenez. Jeremy James Sanders. John Shoup III. Jack Joseph Shannon, McDonough Scholar. Jasmine Elise Smith. Saria Sky Smith. Chelsea Town Sokoloff, McDonough Scholar. Roshan Srinath. Ethan Novick Stern. John David Struick. Sean Michael Thomas, Jr. Anisha Cipuranini. Nikos John Siorgas. Nicholas Donald Tuckman, McDonough Scholar. Sean Thomas Duffy. Natalie Valadares. Anthony Sevier Vasquez. Brian Bryce Fiorce, McDonough Scholar. Daniel Ward. Joseph Eligio Waz. Paul Wheelock. Layton Allen Durant Williamson. And finally, Brian Word Sims. Surprise how you manage <laughs> over three days. Wow. President DeJoya, as Dean of the McDonough School of Business, it is my honor to present the aforementioned candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration, Executive Master of Business Administration, Executive Masters in Leadership, Master of Arts in International Business and Policy, Master of Science and Management, Master of Science in Business Analytics, and Master of Science in Finance. Will the candidates please rise? Right, right, right. These candidates have been duly examined by the faculty and approved by the board of directors. I therefore ask that you bestow on them the degrees in course. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon these candidates the degrees of Master of Business Administration, Executive Masters in Leadership, Master of Science in Finance, Master of Arts and in International Business and Policy, Master of Science in Management, and Master of Science in Business Analytics. Congratulations.
You are now officially alumni. Please be seated. So congratulations, class of 2023. We are proud of you for graduating and for what you've accomplished while at Georgetown. And we know that for you, the best is yet to come. While at Georgetown McDonough, you've learned finance and accounting, I hope, <laughs> management and marketing, strategy and operations. And you've grown as managers and leaders. And now I know you will do well for yourselves and well for the world. The world is often a complex, challenging and confusing place. Now, more than ever, the world needs you. If you look at factors like income, wealth, life expectancy, and health across the world and through history, you and I have so much for which we should be grateful. And so we have a duty and an opportunity to make a positive difference. If not us, who? After all, you are the heirs of a nearly 500-year-old Jesuit tradition that stands for values to be people for others. And you have the tools to make a difference. You have the legitimacy. Georgetown's name resonates at so many levels around the globe. You have the networks to tap into tens of thousands of alumni across more than 100 countries. And you have the expertise and confidence to know that you can tackle any challenge. I believe that you can and will make a difference. You will, through your lives and actions, serve the common good. So go forth, do well, and do good. As you go forward, your degree and experience here will open many doors and possibilities. You will, in many case, cases, work in new regions and countries, and we will not, unfortunately, see you so often. But wherever you go and whatever you do, remember where you're from. So who or what is Georgetown? Yes. Georgetown is a lovely campus, elegant buildings, especially Hariri, <laughs> scholarly faculty, scaring staff, and wonderful students. But most of all, Georgetown alumni are dispersed around the globe, and it's you who give strength and meaning to our name. More than any of us at the podium today, you define us through your actions, by what you say and what you do and how you do it. So, McDonough graduates, remember, wherever life takes each of you, you are always welcome home. Come home by hiring colleagues. <laughs> Come home for referrals, for contacts, for advice. Come home to share your expertise as teachers and guest lecturers. Come home to meet your colleagues, old and new. Come home to really enrich who we are together. Or come home just to say hello. But come home. We'll be waiting. We'll keep the light on. For you are Hoyers. You are the heart of Georgetown, now and forever. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present the president of Georgetown University, Dr. John 
Jay DeJoya to deliver closing reflections. Well, good afternoon, everybody. What a special day. It's a privilege to be able to celebrate this with all of you. As you've just heard from Dean Almeida, each of you has earned your place among the graduates of Georgetown University. And this is a day of gratitude. Thank you to the families and loved ones, mentors, friends, colleagues, and peers who have supported you. We are all honored to share this moment with you. I wish to offer my sincere appreciation to Dean Almeida and to our faculty and staff for all of their efforts to support and guide you to this milestone. These colleagues, many seated behind me, have demonstrated extraordinary care and commitment to teaching and mentorship, to research and scholarship, to supporting a vibrant and diverse community. To our faculty and staff, I want to thank you for your many contributions every day that make this day possible. Our ceremony is made that much more special with the reflections of our speaker. Mr. Smelyansky, I can't thank you enough for joining us and for serving as such an inspiration to all of us with your presence. And to the class of 2023, congratulations. This is a day of celebration. This is a day of gratitude. This is your day. So much has been asked of you over these past few years. You have forged community during the most difficult of circumstances. You have faced challenges none of us could have imagined only a few years ago. You've gained knowledge and experience, a deeper understanding of yourself and our world. Your hard work, your dedication, your commitment to service and to the common good, everything that you've done at Georgetown has brought you to this moment. There are two milestones that we mark this year that are resonant with a celebration like this, two events that represent the confluence of challenges that we face as a global community. 75 years ago, in 1948, the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, affirming the inherent dignity of every human being. This was an unprecedented global statement, an illumination of the shared values and commitments that unite us as a world and the responsibilities that we share for one another. And over these decades, our world has grown ever more interconnected, perhaps no, no better symbolized than in the invention of the internet in 1983, 40 years ago when the first universal computer protocols were established. Now our world, our lives, we are all that much more connected through our economies, transportation, through communication and technology. Ideas can have an immediate and worldwide reach and so too do the challenges that we face. This, this, this presents new, urgent and emerging challenges for all of us, for business, for how we organize our communities, our civic architecture, how we protect health and safety, how we conduct our daily lives. How can we advance the flourishing of all of our people, the flourishing of our planet in this age of technology and worldwide connection? Over your time here, we've begun to address these challenges together. You've been embraced by a faculty who are at the leading edge of knowledge. And your experiences inside and outside the classroom, with faculty and with one another, with experiential learning projects, in jobs and internships, all these have exposed you to the very best that we know and prepare you to anticipate the global challenges of our future. You go forth this day prepared to make a difference in our world, to transform our world so that all of our people can flourish. When you arrived here, you embarked on a journey, one that now continues beyond this place and beyond this moment. 
And as you enter the next stages of your journeys, you do so not only with the knowledge that you have learned, but also the values that have shaped your lives here, the character that you have forged. All of you are prepared to bring your talents, your knowledge, your compassion, and your imagination in service to our world. As you depart this day of celebration and accomplishment, we are all so deeply grateful for the contributions that you've made to this community and we look forward to the ways that your leadership and service will contribute to the common good of the broader communities in which you will participate. It is a privilege for all of us to be here with you to recognize this important milestone in your lives in the beginning of the next step on your journeys. And now with this commencement, you embark on another special time in your lives. This is your time, and we are honored to share this moment with you. To the class of 2023, congratulations. Thank you, President DeJoya, and thank you all for joining us today, and once more, congratulations to our graduates. We wish you well in all your endeavors, and welcome you as members of the Georgetown alumni family forever. Please stand for the alma mater, which again will be led by Commonwealth Brass and members of the Georgetown University Concert Choir and Chamber Singers. The alma mater is located at the back of the commencement program book. Please remain standing while Father Ron Anton offers the benediction. And let us conclude this ceremony by calling down God's blessing on all the graduates of the class of 2023 as you leave from this day and this place to go out and change the world. Good and gracious God, bestow on us grace and courage the grace to continue to support and care for one another as we have done these past many months. The grace to use our gifts and our talents to make a difference in, in our homes, in our workplace, and in the world, never tiring of working for a more just world. Lord God, Give us the grace to be leaders who can imagine a new world, a world where each person is valued just because each person 
is created and loved by you. God, make us leaders who work for those who have less, the lost, the stranger, the hungry, the hurting, the marginalized, the depressed, the sick. And most importantly, make us leaders who have sought and found how to serve. Amen. So will the alumni and guests please remain standing at their places and the faculty, until the faculty and graduates have recessed. For our new alumni and your families, we welcome you to join us at the Rafiq B. Hariri Building for your celebratory reception. The 2023 commencement exercises at the McDonough School of Business are now officially closed. Thank you. 